So all uh, operational amplifiers have the V triangle in here. Whether it's a differential amplifier or whether it's an inverting amplifier, that's the symbol uh, that you're looking for. It's got a negative and a positive input. It's how the resistors are arranged around that that tells you what type of uh, amplifier it is. So in an inverting amplifier, you have a resistor, which we will call R1, connected to the negative terminal. Now the negative terminal we can also refer to as the inverting terminal. So that's where the, the inverting amplifier comes from. The positive terminal is connected to what we call ground, which is zero volts, because remember, in order to have a potential difference, we've got to have um, you know, two voltages really, we've got to have a voltage difference between two points. So the positive terminal doesn't have a resistor connected to it, hence why we're calling it the inverting amplifier. If it did have a resistor connected to it, then we would call that the, the, a non-inverting amplifier, because it's connected to the positive terminal or the non-inverting terminal. But it's not in this case, and you don't need to know about that for higher physics. All you need to know is to be able to identify the, um, the inverting amplifier from a diagram. So this is our, our zero volts line. Out the other side here, we're going to have um, our output voltage. So across here, we're going to have what we call V out. And we're going to call this V in. So that's our input voltage, um, which we'll also refer to in the experiment and later on in the equation as V1. So technically, this is, this is V1. We'll talk about that in a minute. The resistor that goes from the output back to the input, the output is fed back to the input, so it's called the feedback resistor. So RF we would call the feedback resistor. So RF here is our feedback resistor. R1 is our input resistor. And if you remember back to yesterday, we were talking about what the ideal oper operational amplifier should have. It should have um, a very high input resistance so that it has virtually no input current. So the input resistor there is there to reduce the current to zero amps. V out is, as you would expect, output voltage. And V1, which I've listed there as Vn, because it's the same thing. But in the equation and in the, the experiment in a moment, that is our, our input voltage. So that's what an inverting amplifier looks like. You need to be able to look at a diagram and say, OK, that's, that's an operational amplifier operating in inverting mode. It's going to take this input that we've got on here, and it's going it's to amplify it. How much it amplifies it by is determined by its gain. Remember, the gain of an amplifier is how much it increases uh, a signal by, the strength of a signal by. And we're going to figure out through experiment what determines how much of a gain the inverting amplifier has. So now we've conducted the experiment from the experiment on activity 17. We conclude that V out over Vn or V1 is equal to negative Rf over R1. Now this is the formula for inverting mode. From standard grade, we're familiar with the concept of gain, gain being how much uh, an amplifier increases the, the voltage by. Um, and previously, what we've looked at for gain, for voltage gain, was the output voltage divided by the input voltage. So that's a familiar term. So what that basically says, what this little term here says, is that the gain is equal to negative RF over R1. 
So it ties in with what I was telling you about how the, the way the resistors are connected and the values of resistors that you use, they determine what your gain is. So RF, negative RF divided by R1 is going to tell you what the gain of that amplifier is. So you can use that to calculate missing, missing values of voltage, or if you've got both the voltages, you can use it to calculate a missing value of resistance. So you need to be able to look at this and say, okay, that's inverting mode. It's inverting mode because this resistor here is connected to the inverting terminal, which is the negative terminal. And you need to be able to apply this equation to uh, that sort of situation as well. Notice in our results that the output voltage is always the inverse of what the input voltage is. So if the input voltage is positive, then the output voltage becomes negative. So it inverts the signal. When I say inverts, that basically means it changes it from positive to negative, or it changes it from negative to positive. So that's what an inverting amplifier does. It amplifies a positive voltage, changes it into a negative voltage, or amplifies a negative voltage and changes it into a positive voltage. So whatever comes out the other side is always the inverse of what goes in. So that's our formula there for the gain of an operational amplifier. I'll show you an example on that just now. So a simple example of an inverting operational amplifier. So just write down what we have first of all. VO, which is uh, the output voltage, which we've got across here. We don't know. We don't know what the output voltage from the amplifier is. V1, which is our input voltage here, is given as 0 0.8 volts. R1. Which of these resistors is R1? 20 kilo. Yep, 20 kilo. Because R1 is our input resistor. The one that is in inverting mode, the one that is connected to the inverting terminal. And RF is our feedback resistor. The resistor that feeds back the signal from the output through to the input. So RF is 200k. So when we apply our equation that we've just proved, V out is not known. V1 is 0.8. Remember, it's negative. We must put that negative sign in there. Both of these resistors are in kiloohms, so I wouldn't see the point in uh, multiplying these out at all, because the ratio of 200 to 20 is going to be the same as 200,000 to 20,000. If we cross multiply, Or otherwise, we get a uh, minus 10 times 0.8, we'll get negative 8 volts. 